Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Julia Christine if you guys are new here So for today's video, I'm showing you guys how I use procreate pocket to make kind of my digital illustrations If you want to even call it that I mostly use procreate to make my podcast illustrations as well as a few um, kind of transitions or text items for my YouTube videos So I wanted to make kind of an introductory video on how I personally use procreate pocket So kind of like the shortcuts and just the basic gist of procreate in general So if you guys are interested in seeing an actual like doodle with me style video where I'm actually like creating an actual piece of art if you want to call it that let me know in a comment because i definitely can do something of that sort if you guys are interested but i just wanted to make this video into kind of just the basics of procreate and kind of just show you guys how i use it so this isn't like a step-by-step -step video or anything this is just me showing you the very very basics of how i use the app i did want to mention that procreate pocket is 4.99 in the app store it's so worth it to me to pay five dollars for an app that has so many features that help me with all types of my social media so let's get into it So here's Procreate Pocket and when I first start out on Procreate Pocket, um, I guess I can kind of go through like each of the little top bar items. So with select, this is how you select each picture and you can like delete them or do more with them. So you could always export, share, duplicate them, things of that nature and then import. This is if you want to import stuff from any of these like apps that are on your phone. I never use that. And then with photo, this is how you go to your album. So I could always import any of my album photos that way and then just doodle throughout that way but I'll show you also another way to do that so with the plus sign in the right corner here I always hit that and that's how I start my new custom canvas I guess if you want to call it that so you can always do a canvas size that is your screen size um, you can do a square I typically always just do my screen size so it'll make a new screen from here you can doodle and I like to use the mono line. This is the easiest way for me to make like a line that has relatively straight edges. If you use like a pencil, it kind of looks jagged. Like you can see it doesn't have a very rounded line. This is how you get the brushes. So the ones that I use the most frequently are in the calligraphy section and that would be the mono line or the brush pen. I am not good at calligraphy, but as for little shortcuts on how to erase things, you're going to double tap with two fingers on the screen to get rid of anything, or if you want to redo and put those strokes back onto the screen, you're gonna tap with three fingers. So those are some shortcuts that I use. And then when it comes to adding a photo, you're gonna go to modify, and then you're going to hit that little wrench, and then you're gonna insert a photo. So here, I can insert this photo and then from here if you are going to adjust it in any way don't use the free form like I just did so I'm going to adjust it back to how it usually looks and then you're going to go to uniform on the bottom where I just clicked and that will keep your picture in line with the original shape of it and then you just tap the little mouse to get out of it. So from here you can always look at the layers so the layers is that double square up in the right corner so that is how you would look at your layers so layers are the most important part with procreate and i'm going to tell you that right now if you are going to be drawing like any kind of artwork over this or whatever you want to use that so i always add new layers by just tapping that little button so from here you can always go to the paint tool um, which is that little round circle in the corner you can choose any color you want on the spectrum or you can do the eyedropper so that's that button there if I wanted a blue color like that for the sky that's how you would get that again you can change all of your brushes with the brush you can always download new brushes too which I have never done that but we'll go with monoline so I'm gonna go to the eyedropper and we'll do a skin color we'll start with that and then you just oops <laughs> too big and then this adjusts your size but you just draw I'm not going to show you guys entirely how I make these because there are just way better videos out there and it takes forever to make one, but that is how you do those simple features like picking a color 
and doodling in general. We'll get rid of these layers. You just swipe left to get rid of a layer and you can delete, lock, or duplicate the layer. So we'll just start out like that. If you want to change your background color, you can just hit that. You can go to the disc and that will let you choose this way, classic obviously, or the value layer, which I don't really use this one as much, but any frequently used colors that I use, I put them into my own palette, which says untitled palette on the bottom, but I like to use the classic one the most. And then let's say you're on a new layer and you draw something. So let's say I drew in gray and let's say I drew a circle. I don't like this pen. Let's say I drew a circle and you want to fill that circle. So you're gonna hold down on the color. Oh, that just changed it. You're gonna hold down on the color and drag it and that will change the color of it. You have to be on the layer that you're, you're wanting to change the color of in order to change the whole shape. So if I were to be on a new layer like this and I went to go change the color of it, it would change the whole screen, which obviously you don't want that. So you have to be on the layer to change it to a different color. So that's that. And then if you want to make a circle that looks a little bit more circular than how you could actually freehand one, you're just going to draw your circle and then once you're done drawing, hold the line and it will change it to um, a shape. So from there you can edit the shape, you just go to modify and then you hit the little mouse button and you can distort it however you need to. That's how you make a shape. And other things that you can do on a procreate obviously like I said with the layers so let's say I wanted to change this to white that's how I would do that and then you'd have to obviously drag it oops <laughs> you'd have to drag it to that little guy I keep messing up here we go so there's that. I'm not really great at freehanding or calligraphy in general. It's definitely something that you have to be patient with and learn, but using a little stylus pen is always super helpful for me. I'm just not a good writer. My handwriting is ugly. <laughs> So the one other thing that I can think of to show you guys, if you wanted to change like the size of this, you can go to the little S tool and then you draw like a box around this and then that makes it into, <laughs> makes you able to distort it. I don't know. I don't know how to explain this. I'm not very great at it, but you can rotate it, do whatever you want and then just get out of it that way. So let's say I wanted to duplicate this layer but I wanted to change the color of it. So from here, you can change it to whatever color you want to change it to. Sometimes if you do this, it can make the picture look a little bit um, grainy. Like as you can see, the lines aren't very sharp, but that's okay. I'm sure there's a better way to do it, but this is just the way that I've found. So I'm going to adjust it this way. Now you'll have the double, doubled layer. So it's kind of like the exact same thing drawn over it, but just a different color. So I'll do that a lot if I'm wanting like a shadow effect like I just drew there. So yeah, the most important thing with Procreate if you're wanting to make art like this, I made this for someone, but if you're wanting to make things of this nature, the most important thing is layers, like I was talking about earlier. So we'll delete this guy. So with these, I'll show you guys. This is how many layers I drew to make this. And sometimes you can group the layers, so that way if you want to like get them off of the screen, you can group them. But this is literally how many layers I have on here and if you ever wanted to get a layer off or like hide the layer you just tap the little checkbox and that'll hide the layer and show the layer so if I were to hide this layer obviously you can see that the hair is gone <laughs> so that's how you show and hide layers these take a lot of practice to make and obviously you can see on the bottom that part wasn't shown when I cropped it so I didn't really take the time to make it look great but yeah, so if you wanted to make a screen size, import a picture, I'll show it again. Let's import this one. If I wanted to make this into a doodle, I would probably start with the skin and go from there because the skin is probably like the lowest point in the picture. Like obviously my hair is layered over my skin, so I'm going to start with that. And... You just have to be really patient. These take very long to make. That's why people charge a little bit more to make them. 
If you're super new at making these, it's gonna take a long time to make it. I'm doing this really terribly just for time's sake. And then I'm gonna drag it so the color shows up there. Okay, now I want my neck done. So now I want to do my neck and I realized that my neck is below my chin. So I want that to be a layer below. So I'm gonna do it that way. I want a darker color, so I'm gonna use the eyedropper and then make it a slightly darker color that way there's definition in between my neck and my face in order to do that drag and drop thing you have to draw a little line here so that way there's a separation and then it, you just drag and drop it so that's my neck this looks terrible honestly but that's okay so that's kind of how i would do that for hair i would make the layer above that and sometimes hair can be definitely tricky i'm not very good at the hair quite yet You really just have to play around with things, figure things out kind of on your own. Personally, when I started to doodle on Procreate, I looked up a lot of YouTube videos and this one probably isn't even helpful, but someone requested that I do it. That is how I use it. Um, this isn't a tutorial to be proficient in Procreate. This is just how I personally use it. And I'm sure I'm doing things wrong, but that's okay. There's multiple ways to do everything and get a similar outcome, obviously. So um, I don't think there is any one way to do Procreate. Basically the premise of all of this is to do layers. Like Shrek says, onions have layers, so does Procreate. <laughs> so one last thing, if you wanted to export this, which obviously we wouldn't want to because it's not done, but there's a million different ways that you can do this by the way, but I go to modify and then I hit that wrench again. You can also go to canvas and crop, resize, do any of those things you want. You can flip it horizontally, flip it vertically, things like that. I don't use the video as prefs or help, but you can go to share and then you can export it as a PDF, JPEG, PNG, things of that nature. If it has a transparent background, so let's say I wanted to get rid of these layers and just have this show up, so I could put this on top of any other type of picture. If I wanted to do that, I would just have to hide those layers and then export it as a PNG file. PNG just is a transparent background file. So the way you can tell if it's transparent is if it has the little checkered squared background. So if I wanted to just save it as a normal picture, like I said, I would just go there, share, and then save as a JPEG. If you see here, save image, that's how you would save that image. But you can also go to the main screen and you can hit select more, share, and do the exact same thing. Also, one thing that you can do, if you wanted to reduce the opacity of something so they're more see-through, you just adjust this little slider, but to have it at full hardness or full opacity, you would want this circle all the way up. So one last thing to show you, if you wanted to draw facial features or something, or if you wanted to see like the texture on the shirt after you drew like the white color, so what you would do here is adjust the opacity of the layer. So I wanna add a new layer in order to draw facial features, but I want to either make that layer hidden or I want to reduce the opacity of it. So you're gonna touch the little wand with the sparkles or whatever, and then you'll touch the opacity and you'll slide your finger to the left or to the right to change the opacity of it. That seriously looks so funny. But okay, so now we're gonna go to the other layer and we'll make some eyebrows. So of course use your little eyedropper to find a color that works for you and you can draw some features in. I typically don't draw eyes and nose and lips because it just looks funny when you draw it. Some people are really good at it. I have not perfected it. So if you want to erase something, the eraser is the little blue one that I just clicked on and you'll just erase. And with the eraser, if you tap on it again, you can change any of the brushes again and that's how you would draw different facial features. This looks horrible. It's just to quickly show you guys how I use Procreate. And then if you want to bring the opacity layer up from behind it again, of course you just do that. All right, so that is the end of the video. I hope you guys learned at least something on Procreate. Hopefully this can get you guys started with at least using the app or being a little bit more familiarized with the app. I hope that I could help in some way, shape, or form. Don't forget to go follow me over on Instagram as well as subscribe to me here on this channel. But I will see you guys very soon in a new one.